Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about some big storms with an upcoming heat wave as I walk you through the next seven to 10 days. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. This is August the 6th. This is the overall satellite picture this morning. And what we have going on is we have that cool front that we've been talking about all week. That is still off the coast of the southeast coast. That's actually going to be retreating as a warm front. And as that does, it's going to fizzle out, but it's going to bring the rain chances back inland further into the southeast. We watched these several boundaries up here. We have some instability back here by uh, Idaho, traversing across uh, portions of uh, Montana. That is kicking off some scatter, scattered showers and stronger storms. And that's gonna set up uh, some severe weather in this part of the country tomorrow. Uh, but today you can definitely see where the temperatures fly uh, as things start to retreat. And we're gonna be starting to warm up uh, in a big way. So as we take a look at the overall hazards for this morning, you can definitely see where that stalled front has been much of the week. We've been inundated with some very heavy rain, especially over portions of uh, Florida here. And we still have uh, sporadic uh, flood watches uh, for them as that cold front or the now cool front, but we'll be backing up as a warm front. We'll be retreating back further inland. That'll spread the rain chances further inland into the southeast. And then we have a lot of heat advisories and excessive heat warnings. And I think this is only gonna expand as we go into the weekend and especially uh, into early next week. So let's take a look at the overall uh, setup for the next uh, seven to 10 days. Here's the look this morning. So what we have going on underneath these little blue areas, these are more or less troughs. These are instability on the upper levels of the atmosphere. Uh, that's indicative of our cool front that we still have what they consider the northwest flow. There's a lot of smoke and a lot of wildfires happening still. And and with that northwest flow, that's pushing a lot of the smoke, uh, you know, covering much of the U.S. And a lot of these areas are having some of those hazy conditions and kind of poor air quality uh, because of the wind. Uh, but that's going to be turning around tomorrow as things start to retreat and things start to start to uh, warm up for a good chunk of the country because by Tuesday look at the look at the uh, the ridge starting to build over the northwest the ridge uh, builds over the northeast the only game in town is we have some instability you know way up here in Canada right, right along the border there but you can definitely see uh, a lot of the cooler air subsides and retreats as that warm front still pushes up when you have what they call zonal flow or the zonal flow that is not a cold flow that's a hot flow <laughs> and you're not going to get much uh coolness down to the south with that type of flow and all that all the cooler air is going to be retreated well to the north up here in canada and and alaska but underneath we've got a deepening ridge over the, uh, the corners of the country over the over the northwest and also the the northeast so by the time we get into that Friday, next Friday, yeah, we're looking at that deepening ridge just kind of expanding over the over the northwest. We're probably probably talking triple digit heat uh, coming back by midweek for uh, the portions of the of, of the northwest. But we also, again, that trough is still well to the north there, and then the, we'll start to heat up, especially in the Ohio Valley and the northeast. And then we'll actually have to be looking at, at the tropics underneath uh, because I am expecting systems starting to get close uh, by then. So by the time we let's look at the map of this morning of the overall setup as we kind of take you through the next uh, seven to 10 days. Yeah, here's your setup. There's our cool front that, that was impacting much of the country that, that brought the respite from, from the heat relief. But that's going to be retreating as the warm front. That's depicting where it turns from you know blue here to red that is the warmer air that's the south wind so as soon as the south winds turn around that's a warm wind and that's you're going to start to be heating up in a big way but then as you heat up you'll have that instability in the uh, afternoon hours and the early evening hours where you do have that scattered sporadic isolated uh thunderstorm activity in the heat of the day we try to have that monsoon al alive but it's not going to be nearly as inland as we what we saw in July. It's going to keep way further to the south. 
and we have these two boundaries up here that's creating that instability uh this morning and that will continue through the day through idaho into portions of montana here and we also have this other little boundary that's going to be sneaking in pushing in from the south with that trough that zonal flow that we mentioned uh with some with uh, some instability underneath so by the time we get into saturday some of those storms could be strong to severe storms and some bigger storms uh at that so these two boundaries kind of merge together and as they merge yeah that's going to create the instability over the uh, over this upper central u.s and down underneath yeah we have that uh you know that cool front that's going to be again retreating as that warm front as that boundary will traverse uh inland we have some instability out here in the uh, the Pacific Northwest. We still try to ring out some any little rain showers we can uh, for you guys up there into uh, portions of uh, Washington and Upper uh, Idaho where they just desperately uh, need the rain. But underneath that, there's that severe threat going into Saturday. So areas like uh, Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, into Sioux Falls, uh, into, into Rochester, those areas will be under the gun. Uh, Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, the, right there around the bullseye there that that you could be looking at some strong to severe thunderstorms some gusty winds some hail potential there is an isolated uh tornado threat with this particular system as this will that as those two boundaries kind of merge together so and then it tries what they call back build back back to the south but as it does it loses its intensity and then a lot of the a lot of it this activity will be just become scattered to isolated and then you more or less have what they call downdraft winds you know as these thunderstorms kind of collapse as they move further you know further south on that back building trailing end so places like an amarillo uh you, you're probably going to get more or less gusty winds out of the situation uh with some of those stronger th thunderstorms kind of collapsing as they get as they get nearby so as we take you through uh, Sunday, what the map would look like by then, yeah, there's that boundary, there's that severe threat, transfers to more or less a heavier rain threat as we get further into Wisconsin, getting into central Iowa there, that'll eventually start, start to impact uh, portions of uh, Chicago around the Illinois area as the, uh, as the, again, where that boundary is along the southeast coast, we'll still have that sporadic scattered thunderstorms we start to heat up uh, in Texas, so no more, no more 90 degree days. We're starting to get impact, you know, more or less into the, you know, mid 90s, if not upper 90s, by the time we get into that Sunday time frame. As we do see that another troughs so of cooler air uh, entering the picture in the Pacific Northwest, but it's going to be a massive flip, uh, where it's going to be fairly nice on a Sunday, but then after this, man, it's things are going to be starting to really ramp up and heat up in a big way as we go into next week uh there's your north american look uh for monday <laughs> you can definitely see that yeah the, the the trough the zonal flow retreats well to the north there's not much underneath as the heat's going to start to build and much of the country uh underneath as the as the uh, the zonal flow will will you know retreat all the way back up into canada and the ridge will build uh underneath and we start heating up in a big way and you know the middle of august that's your hottest time of the year and mother nature is going to show her true colors that man yeah it's, it is august and it's, it can get hot and it's going to heat up in a big way and a lot of you guys are going back unfortunately to the triple digit heat so as we take you look take you into that tuesday time frame yeah there's your zonal flow where it's all white here that's clear skies ridge uh, you know ridge underneath not much happening as far as rain goes that's just going to heat up as as the sky is clear as the ridge builds in that's just going to heat up the atmosphere uh further and further as you get into the into the week as as uh, you, the only game in town by then will be the instability aloft well up to the northeast uh into uh, portions of uh, michigan going into portions of upstate new york Yes, where we're going to have to start getting start to watch the tropics underneath along the coastal communities of the of the south and the southeast with, uh, you know, as things start to get active down down in the Atlantic. So as we take you through uh, Wednesday, yeah, there's that there's that ridge will be slowly building as that uh, trough that that, you know, traverse across from west to east throughout the week and as it does back behind it it builds the heat back behind it so we warm up 
in a in a huge way back in, here in the Pacific Northwest. A lot of these places, like say in the Portland area, you're probably talking triple digit heat. Unfortunately, coming back. I mean, for you guys, that you, last time you saw that really was back in June, and unfortunately, yeah, it's gonna actually coming back. Not nearly as intense. We're not talking 116, but still, like 105 potential is not out of the question, and that's some serious hot air for that part of the country uh, with you know well over 30 degrees above average temperature so that's some pretty extreme heat uh as far as the anomalies go and but as we as that system will continue moving across uh there's that instability down here in, down here in the southeast as we take you through uh that friday time frame yes we could have another little troughs trying to sneak in we'll have to look what you know what may be coming out of the uh, coming out of the atlantic maybe get into the caribbean by then so this, all this could so definitely look at for, you know, tropical trouble as it starts to probably getting near or at least closer to the United States. So I do feel things are going to be starting to ramp up after we get after the 10th time frame going into the middle of the month. So we're definitely going to have to be looking out down to the south here, especially basically really anywhere from Texas all the way up to northeast coast is going to be under the gun, open, open sesame for uh, tropical trouble. Uh, as we get into the you know the middle of the month so let's take you through temperature wise of what it looks like over the next uh five days uh you can see for the next five days it's not that bad i mean as far as like averages go like i mentioned this trough is going to be uh traversing from west to east so for the next couple of days in the pacific northwest it's not bad it's actually fairly comfortable but it, it turns around quick in a big way and i mean you rapidly warm up uh, and then as that as that ridge will slowly move away, uh, we ha we have those well above average anomalies uh, pushing in. You can definitely see where, where the trough sets up well to the north. We got some cool, if not colder air b building up in into parts of Alaska and much of northern Canada here. So there's there's some colder air there, but it, the, the, it just the jet stream lifts well to the north and you're not going to get it underneath in the United States it, the, as the ridge will start to build. And as it as we go through that, you know, that Wednesday to, to next Monday time frame, that that's when I really feel some of the hottest temperatures are, are going to be as really these two standouts right here in the Pacific Northwest. There's your bullseye of you know, a lot of this heat's going to be well up in the 90s, if not triple digits. And a lot of these places up here in the off the West Coast and the Pacific Northwest. We start to warm up in a big way in the Ohio Valley, as well as the Northeast as well, as this ridge builds over the top in southeastern Canada. And that's not a pretty setup for tropical trouble too. So this is, this is um, you know, kind of a prime setup when you have a ridge building over the top like that, that pushes storms closer to the coast, that pushes storms closer to the United States and has, uh, you know, tropical trouble under underneath. So we'll definitely have to be looking out for the southeast so yes as we expand the view and take you through you know the rest of those 15 days essentially for you know between the 15th and the 19th there yeah the ridge will continue to stay dominant over much of the pacific northwest with those well above average anomalies as we'll have to look underneath from basically texas to the southeast for any tropical trouble that may be nearby uh or at least probably maybe having impacts for the United States by then. So, hey, I, th then let's take a look at the overall uh, precipitation over the next, uh, you know, seven to 10 days time frame as well. So you can definitely see it's pretty high and dry for much of the Pacific Northwest. We have some rain showers we're dealing with, uh, you know, yesterday and, t and today, but it, it, you know, these, these sporadic cells that retreat well to the north throughout the week underneath there's your, your your rain prospects in Idaho and then uh, portions of Montana. There's as this continues moving across, some of the higher instability will take place over Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin to get into portions of uh, Illinois and Indiana. And then that 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 uh, trough will retreat well to the north. And then we'll have to look for tropical trouble of anything that might be coming nearby as from basically from Texas all the way to the southeast coast and even the northeast is not out of the question uh, with these particular setups that could be happening over the next uh, couple of weeks. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.